Having now proven that our greedy algorithm is in fact correct, it remains to be seen what the runtime of this implementation is. So let's try and do that. These lines at the top of the code are all simple assignments. You could argue maybe this line here takes time proportional to the number of vertices in order to copy all of the data. So let's say that the runtime here is CN. Notice N because N is the number of vertices of the graph. Now let's look at this while loop. The while loop, how many times does it run? Well, it says while U isn't empty and at every single step we're removing one vertex from U and while there exists an edge, let's just assume there's always an edge, this would run N minus one times because we were moving one vertex every single time, it would in fact actually run n times. So let's say that it runs n times. And what is the cost of each run of the loop? Well, this stuff at the bottom isn't too bad. This stuff down here is all constant time operations, so that's pretty good. But then we have this very much a cheating statement up here that says, let this be the minimum weight edge connecting the two different parts of the graph, the blue nodes that we had before and the white nodes. That part is actually very difficult. Notice we aren't storing any additional information in this algorithm. Therefore, the only way to find this minimum weight edge as we have it coded so far is actually to look at every single edge in the graph. So this part here, actually runs m times or cm for the cost which means that this total loop all all takes theta of n times m which that doesn't necessarily look bad or good it lo it's not very obvious looking at it how good that is so let's try and remember some stuff we know about the number of edges. M is the number of edges. We showed in our graph algorithm section that a complete graph has n minus 1 times n over two edges. And a tree, like I mentioned in one of our proofs, has the number of edges minus 1. Therefore, my bounds here are going to be either n squared for a lower bound when I multiply that by n, or n cubed for an upper bound when I multiply that by n. In big O, of n cubed is not good. In fact, if for practical graphs, for example, a common place that graphs show up is in social networks. The Facebook it can be represented as a graph where every single profile is a node and every single connection between profiles is an edge. There are billions of people on, on Facebook, so billions to the three is unreasonably large for an algorithm. This runtime is not ideal. That being said, this is relatively straightforward to run for ourselves. So let us try and do this. Here we have an example. Let's try and run the algorithm. I'll use the same colors I did before for this analysis. We will highlight nodes. Let's start with V1. That's what our code said to do. After starting with V1, what we're going to do is find the minimum weight edge connecting V1 to something not in the color to set. There are two options, two and three. The smallest edge is two, so we add that to the minimum spanning tree, and then we add V2 to the spanning tree. Now we need to check all of the edges. We have seven, five, and three. For the algorithm though, it doesn't necessarily know that it doesn't need to check all of those edges, so it's going to check every single edge of the graph every time. Uh, we don't need to do that, thankfully, by hand. So the minimum edge now is this edge with weight three, and that adds V6 to the minimum spanning tree. And now we still have the previous edges, seven, five, and now we have four and one. One is the winner of that battle. So we add one to the minimum spanning tree. And now we have seven, five, four, three, four. The winner of that is three. So we add three to the minimum spanning tree. Now we have, as before, seven, we no longer care about this five, actually, that's kind of nice. We no longer care about this four, that's kind of nice. So we have seven, five, and four. Four is the winner of that battle. And we add V8 to the minimum spanning tree. Now let's check. 
we have seven, we have five, and we have six and nine. The winner of all of those is five. Now, we still have seven, nine, eight, and nine. The winner of those is seven. So we add seven to the minimum spanning tree. And now we need to add V9. And maybe the easiest way to do this is just look at the edges connecting V9. We have eight, or sorry, nine, eight, and six. Six is the winner of that battle. So we have now achieved a minimum spanning tree and it must be a minimum spanning tree because of our theorem. So that is how we can walk through this algorithm. This doesn't seem very efficient because of the asymptotic analysis we did. How can we make this better? That's gonna be our next implementation, which we'll see in our next video. And we can improve this by storing some additional information. We've seen this approach many times in the past. You can create a more efficient algorithm by increasing the storage that you are using when performing your algorithm.